perfection of things can in no wise be. 24 Again, Vaisan Ha, if this river of Siravata were full of water even to the brim, and overflowing. And a man with business on the other side, bound for the other side, making, for the other side, should come up, and want to cross over. And he, standing on this bank, should invoke the further bank, and say, Come hither, O further bank. Come over to this side. Now what think you, Vaisan Ha? With the further bank of the river Asiravata, by reason of that man's invoking and praying and hoping and praising, come over to this side. Certainly not, Gotama. 25 In just the same way, Vaisan Ha, do the Brahmans versed in the three Vedas omitting the practice of those qualities which really make a man a Brahman, and adopting the practice of those qualities which really make men non-Brahmans say thus, Indra we call upon, Soma we call upon, Veruoa we call upon, Asana we call upon, Pajapati we call upon, Brahma we call upon, Mahidhai we call upon, Yama we call upon. Verily, Vaisanha, that those Brahmans versed in the three Vedas, but omitting the practice of those qualities which really make a man a Brahman, and adopting the practice of those qualities which really make men non-Brahmans that they, by reason of their invoking and praying and hoping and praising, should, after death and when the body is dissolved, become united with Brahma verily such a condition of things can in no wise be. 26 Just, Vaisanha, as if this river Asiravata were full, even to the brim, and overflowing. And a man with business on the other side, making for the other side, bound for the other side, should come up, and want to cross over. And he, on this bank, were to be bound tightly, with his arms behind his back, by a strong chain. Now what think you, Vaisan Ha, would that man be able to get over from this bank of the river Asiravata to the further bank? Certainly not, Gotama. 27 In the same way, Vaisan Ha, there are five things leading to lust, which are called, in the discipline of the Arahas, a chain and a bond. What are the five, forms perceptible to the eye, desirable, agreeable, pleasant, attractive forms, that are accompanied by lust and cause delight? Sounds of the same kind perceptible to the ear. Odors of the same kind perceptible to the nose. Tastes of the same kind perceptible to the tongue. Substances of the same kind perceptible to the body by touch. These five things predisposing to passion are called, in the discipline of the Arahas, a chain and a bond. And these five things predisposing to lust, Vaisanha, do the Brahmans versed in the three Vedas cling to, they are infatuated by them, attached to them, see not the dancer of them, know not how unreliable they are, and so enjoy them. 28 And verily, Vaisanha, that Brahmans versed in the three Vedas, but omitting the practice of those qualities which really make a man a Brahman, and adopting the practice of those qualities which really make men non-Brahmans clinging to these five things predisposing to passion, infatuated by them, attached to them, see not their danger, knowing not their unreliability, and so enjoying them that these Brahmans should after death, on the dissolution of the body, become united to Brahma such a condition of things can in no wise be. 29 Again, Vaisan Ha, if this river Asiravata were full of water even to the brim, and overflowing. And a man with business on the other side, making for the other side, bound for the other side, should come up, and want to cross over. And if he covering himself up, even to his head, were to lie down, on this bank, to sleep. Now what think you, Vaisan Ha? Would that man be able to get over from this bank of the river Asiravata to the further bank? Certainly not, Gotama. 30 And in the same way, Vaisan Ha, there are these five hindrances, in the discipline of, the Arahas, which are called veils, and are called hindrances, and are called obstacles, and are called entanglements. Which are the five? The hindrance of worldly lusts, the hindrance of ill will, the hindrance of torpor and sloth of heart and mind, the hindrance of flurry and worry, the hindrance of suspense, 
These are the five hindrances, Vaisanha, which, in the discipline of the Arahas, are called veils, and are called hindrances, and are called obstacles and are called entanglements. Now with these five hindrances, Vaisanha, the Brahmans versed in the three Vedas are veiled, hindered, obstructed, and entangled. And verily, Vaisanha, that Brahmans versed in the three Vedas, but omitting the practice of those qualities which really make a man a Brahman, and adopting the practice of those qualities which really make men non-Brahmans veiled, hindered, obstructed, and entangled by these five hindrances that these Brahmans should after death, on the dissolution of the body, become united to Brahma such a condition of things can in no wise be. 31 Now what think you, Vaisanha, and what have you heard from the Brahmans aged and well stricken in years, when the learners and teachers are talking together? Is Brahma, in possession of wives and wealth, or is he not? He is not, Gotama. Is his mind full of anger, or free from anger? Free from anger, Gotama. Is his mind full of malice, or free from malice? Free from malice, Gotama. Is his mind tarnished, or, is it pure? It is pure, Gotama. Has he self-mastery, or has he not? He has, Gotama. 32 Now what think you, Vaisanha, are the Brahmans versed in the Vedas in the possession of wives and wealth, or are they not? They are, Gotama. Have they anger in their hearts, or have they not? They have, Gotama. Do they bear malice, or do they not? They do, Gotama. Are they pure in heart, or are they not? They are not, Gotama. Have they self-mastery, or have they not? They have not, Gotama. 33 Then you say, Vaisanha, that the Brahmans are in possession of wives and wealth, and that Brahma is not. Can there, then, be agreement and likeness between the Brahmans with their wives and property, and Brahma, who has none of these things? Certainly not, Gotama. 34 Very good, Vaisanha. But, verily, that these Brahmans versed in the Vedas, who live married and wealthy, should after death, when the body is dissolved, become united with Brahma. Who has none of these things such a condition of things can in no wise be. 35 Then you say, to Vaisanha, that the Brahmans bear anger and malice in their hearts, and are tarnished in heart and uncontrolled, whilst Brahma is free from anger and malice, pure in heart, and has self-mastery. Now can there, then, be concord and likeness between the Brahmans and Brahma? Certainly not, Gotama. 36 Very good, Vaisanha. That these Brahmans versed in the Vedas and yet bearing anger and malice in their hearts, sinful, and uncontrolled, should after death, when the body is dissolved, become united to Brahma, who is free from anger and malice, pure in heart, and has self-mastery. Such a condition of things can in no wise be. So that thus then, Vaisanha, the Brahmans, verse though they be in the three Vedas, while they sit down, in confidence, are sinking down, in the mire, and so sinking they are arriving only at despair, thinking the while that they are crossing over into some happier land. Therefore is it that the threefold wisdom of the Brahmans, wise in their three Vedas, is called a waterless desert, their threefold wisdom is called a pathless jungle, their threefold wisdom is called perdition. 37 When he had thus spoken, the young Brahman Vaisanha said to the Blessed One, It has been told me, Gotama, that the same O Gotama knows the way to the state of union with Brahma. What do you think, Vaisanha, is not Manasakana near to this spot, not distant from this spot? Just so, Gotama. Manasakana is near to, is not far from here. Now what think you, Vaisanha, Suppose there were a man born in Manasakana, and people should ask him, who never till that time had left. Manasakana, which was the way to Manasakana. Would that man, born and brought up in Manasakana, be in any doubt or difficulty? Certainly not, Gotama. And why? 
If the man had been born and brought up in Manasakana, every road that leads to Manasakana would be perfectly familiar to him. 38 That man, Vaisanha, born and brought up at Manasakana might, if he were asked the way to Manasakana, fall into doubt and difficulty, but to the Tathagata, when asked touching the path which leads to the world of Brahma, there can be neither doubt nor difficulty. For Brahma, I know, Vaisanha, and the world of Brahma, and the path which ledeth unto it. Yeah, I know it even as one who has entered the Brahma world, and has been born within it. 39 When he had thus spoken Vaisanha, the young Brahman, said to the Blessed One, Just so has it been told me, Gotama, even that the same O Gotama knows the way to a state of union with Brahma. It is well. Let the Venerable Gotama be pleased to show us the way to a state of union with Brahma, let the Venerable Gotama save the Brahman race. Listen then, Vaisanha, and give ear attentively, and I will speak. So be it, Lord, said the young Brahman Vaisanha, in assent, to the Blessed One. 40 Then the Blessed One spake, and said, No, Vaisanha, that, from time to time, a Tathagata is born into the world, and Araha, a fully awakened one, abounding, in wisdom and goodness, happy, with knowledge of the worlds, unsurpassed as a guide to mortals willing to be led, a teacher of gods and men, a Blessed One, a Buddha. He, by himself, thoroughly understands, and sees, as it were, face to face this universe including the worlds above with the Kods, the Maras, and the Brahmas, and the world below with its Samoas and Brahmans, its princes, and peoples, and he then makes his knowledge known to others. The truth doth he proclaim both in the letter and in the spirit, lovely in its origin, lovely in its progress, lovely in its consummation, the higher. Life doth he make known, in all its purity and in all its perfectness. 41 A householder, Gahapati, or one of his children, or a man of inferior birth in any class, listens to that truth. On hearing the truth he has faith in the Tathagata, and when he has acquired that faith he thus considers with himself. Full of hindrances is household life, a path defiled by passion, free as the air is the life of him who has renounced all worldly things. How difficult it is for the man who dwells at home to live the higher life in all its fullness, in all its purity, in all its bright perfection. Let me then cut off my hair and beard, let me clothe myself in the orange-colored robes, and let me go forth from a household life into the hermit state. Then before long, forsaking his portion of wealth, be it great or be it small, forsaking his circle of relatives, be they many or be they few, he cuts off his hair and beard, he clothes himself in the orange-colored robes. And he goes forth from the household life into the hermit state. 42 When he has thus become a recluse he passes a life self-restrained by that restraint which should be binding on a recluse. Uprightness is his delight, and he sees danger in the least of those things he should avoid. He adopts and trains himself in the precepts. He encompasses himself with goodness in word and deed. He sustains his life by means that are quite pure, good is his conduct, guarded the door of his senses, mindful and self-possessed, he is altogether happy. 43 to 75 And how, Vaisanha, is his conduct good? 76 And he lets his mind pervade one quarter of the world with thoughts of love, and so the second, and so the third, and so the fourth. And thus the whole wide world, above, below around, and everywhere, does he continue to pervade with heart of love, far-reaching, grown great, and beyond measure. 77 Just, Vaisanha, as a mighty trumpeter makes himself heard and that without difficulty in all the four directions, even so of all things that have shape or life, there is not one that he passes by or leaves aside, but regards them all with mind set free, and deep felt love. Verily this, Vaisanha, is the way to a state of union with Brahma. 
78 and he lets his mind pervade one quarter of the world with thoughts of pity, sympathy, equanimity, and so the second, and so the third, and so the fourth. And thus the whole wide world, above, below, around, and everywhere, does he continue to pervade with heart of pity. Sympathy, equanimity, far-reaching, grown great, and beyond measure. 79 Just, Vaisan Ha, as a mighty trumpeter makes himself heard and that without difficulty in all the four directions, even so of all things that have shape or life, there is not one that he passes by or leaves aside, but regards them all with mind set free, and deep felt pity, sympathy, equanimity. Verily this, Vaisan Ha, is the way to a state of union with Brahma. 80 Now what think you, Vaisan Ha, will the bhikkhu who lives thus be in possession of women and of wealth, or will he not? He will not, Gotama. Will he be full of anger, or free from anger? He will be free from anger, Gotama. Will his mind be full of malice, or free from malice, free from malice, Gotama, will his mind be tarnished, or pure? It will be pure, Gotama. Will he have self-mastery, or will he not? Surely he will, Gotama. 81 Then you say, Vaisan Ha, that the bhikkhu is free from household and worldly cares, and that Brahma is free from household and worldly cares. Is there even agreement and likeness between the bhikkhu and Brahma? There is, Gotama. Very good, Vaisan Ha. Then in sooth, Vaisan Ha, that the bhikkhu who is free from Household cares should after death, when the body is dissolved, become united with Brahma, who is the same such a condition of things is every way possible. And so you say, Vaisan Ha, that the bhikkhu is free from anger, and free from malice, pure in mind, and master of himself, and that Brahma is free from anger, and free from malice, pure in mind, and master of himself. Then in sooth, Vaisan Ha, that the bhikkhu who is free from anger, free from malice, pure in mind, and master of himself should after death, when the body is dissolved, become united with Brahma, who is the same such a condition of things is every way possible. 82 When he had thus spoken, the young Brahmans Vaisanha and Bharadvaha addressed the Blessed One, and said, Most excellent, Lord, are the words of thy mouth, most excellent. Just as if a man were to set up that which is thrown down, or were to reveal that which is hidden away, or were to point out the right road to him who has gone astray, or were to bring a lamp into the darkness, so that those who have eyes can see external forms, just even so, Lord, has the truth been made known to us, in many a figure, by the Exalted One. And we, even we, betake ourselves, Lord, to the Blessed One as our guide, to the truth, and to the brotherhood. May the Blessed One accept us as disciples, as true believers, from this day forth, as long as life endures. NDN 013